Hey, what's up everyone and welcome to my review for Thor The Dark World, which is of course the sequel to Thor and it is the second movie to follow the Avengers, after, you know, follow up from the Avengers, and I was really excited for this movie. Actually, I was actually excited for this movie more than Iron Man 3 because the last trailer they showed for Thor The Dark World looked pretty awesome. It actually did. And Iron Man 3, even though I really liked it, kind of disappointed me, especially with that twist, which I just do not care for. Uh, so I was really looking forward to seeing how this movie was going to be. And of course, it's been getting, you know, mediocre reviews, not as good reviews as definitely not the Avengers or Iron Man 3. But hey, you know what? It, it could still be good. So what did I think of Thor The Dark World? Let's talk about the story. The story for Thor The Dark World is actually surprisingly very hard to explain and it's actually kind of hard to follow. Uh, the story here follows Thor, once again played by Chris Hemsworth, who now after the first movie and the Avengers is trying to clean up the universe by going to different worlds and stopping wars and stuff, whatever. He's just trying to, I guess he's, he's like the, the universe janitor. He's just trying to clean up everything that has gone wrong. So he, he's doing that. And then I don't know where Jane Foster, who of course is his love interest played by Natalie Portman, finds this thing called the ether. I don't know how she finds it. She does, she just does. I don't know. She does. And this thing is like this magical black liquid thing that goes into her. And for some reason, she's really, imp I mean, that, that ether is really important, especially to the main villains, the Dark Elves. The main one, I can't remember his name, I think it's M Malekith or something like that, played by Christopher Eccleston, is an evil dude. He's a Dark Elf, and he wants to go and destroy Asgard because he's evil, and he, he reawakens after, uh, like like hundreds of years of being asleep and now he wants to go and attack Asgard but to do that he needs this black ether or whatever the hell it's called and to get that he has to get Jane Foster but of course Thor wants to go save Jane Foster and then uh there's a part where Thor needs help from Loki and of course Loki's the bad guy but they need his help so they get Loki out of jail and they have to go and save I don't know I don't the story is complicated I don't I don't know how to explain it <laughs> That's the story. I mean, it all ends up just being Malekith, or whatever his name is, uh, fighting Thor at the end, and there's a lot of, you know, th hammer throws, and Thor getting smacked around, and Malekith getting smacked around. It, it's just, it ends up being a generic movie, but the, the story itself, explaining it is very hard and very complicated for no reason, and to be honest, I felt like they were making stuff up as, as they were going along. Like, at the end, there's a whole thing about portals, which is really cool for an action scene, but story-wise, I had no idea what the hell it was about. Why are there portals? Why can Natalie Portman and suddenly control them. I, I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, and they probably explained it, but they did it so fast or so quick or so, like, I don't know, just, you know, subtle. It, I don't know, it's just so, so confusing. So the story here is definitely ridiculous. It is. I, I just didn't know what was going on. And the main problem here is the main villain is not threatening at all. You see him a couple times, he speaks his elvish language, and he's really angry and evil. He looks evil, but he's not really threatening. I mean, he's he's a good actor. Christopher Eccleston is a great actor, and he does a good job here, but he's not a threatening villain. You don't feel like you're being threatened. You're just like, uh, I can't wait until he gets hit by Thor's hammer a couple times until he's done. So while the story is kind of hard to follow and the main villain is very weak, I still really enjoy my time with Thor The Dark World. Is it a disappointment? Kind of, but it still has very likable characters. Thor is really likable. Uh, oh man, I already forgot everybody. Uh, Loki, Odin, everybody is just really likable in here. You actually, you actually get to see more of Asgard in this film than Earth, which I liked because in the first film you spent a lot of time on Earth and not that much time on Asgard. Here it's more like 50-50 besides like maybe 70-30. You get to spend a lot of time on Asgard and a lot of time on Earth and both of them are really enjoyable for the most part. The movie itself is very, very funny too and it you know, most of the humor is really good. The only humor I would say that does not work is whenever Kat Dennings is on the screen. I can't remember her character's name, but whenever she's on screen, most of her material just does not work. I know she's a very funny girl, uh, but and she's hot, but she's really, really not funny in this film. She was kind of funny in the first film when they used her you know, you know, sparingly, but here they use her way too much, and she's not that funny, but all the, uh, the rest of the, of the humor, especially with Loki and Thor, is really good. There's actually one cameo in this film by another character from Marvel Universe that is probably the best cameo in, ever, in any Marvel movie ever, and it just made me laugh my ass off. It was so good and unexpected. I loved it. 
But um, yeah, the humor itself works for the most part. The acting is great from everybody. You know, everybody does a great job. Chris Hemsworth, uh, Tom Hiddleston, Anthony Hopkins, uh, Natalie Portman. I think is a little bit weaker in this film than the you know the first one, but she she's still good. Um, even you know Kat Denning, she's good in it. She's just kind of annoying. Uh, Stalin Skarsgård is great. Um, uh, even Christopher Eccleston, like I said, is great. Everybody does a great job. It's just you know. Some of the some of the humor just doesn't work, and of course the main villain. So I, I have some problems with the film, but it's still very enjoyable. But of course, seeing that it is a Marvel film about superheroes, you can expect some action and some special effects. And oh boy, the special effects here are used perfectly because whenever you see some special effects, it's not overused like in Avengers where you know there's things whizzing by every five seconds at the end or something like that. Here they use it for Asgard, they use it for the visuals, you know, the, the design of the environment itself. They use it for the action, of course, but they don't use it too much. It's not like it's a CG-heavy movie, in my opinion. I mean, sure, it is whenever you go to Asgard, but it's not like there's all these special effects in your face, like, oh, look all this action, do you, do you, look all this special effects and stuff. No, it's more like it's just there. You can look at it. It looks great. Um, I, I love that when visuals aren't, like, in your face, like, oh, look at us, look at us, look at us. It's not like that. Let me fix this now. <laughs> I just ruined this. Um, but it's... It's, it's really good. It, it is. The visuals are great here. Uh, especially the action. The first movie had some, you know, pretty decent action for the most part. This movie actually does a better job with action. There's actually a really cool scene at the end that I mentioned earlier with portals. And that's a really cool, very inventive action scene. It was actually really fun to watch. Even if it didn't really make sense to me story-wise. It was still fun to watch. So the action's really good. The visuals are spectacular. I really enjoyed this film. It, it's not the best in the Marvel legacy, I guess, of films. Uh, I think it's about on par with Iron Man 3, in my opinion. Uh, I didn't like it as much as the original Thor. I really like that film. Uh, it's not the best Marvel film, like I said, but it's still good. So definitely go check it out. You probably already did, but hey, whatever. So there you go. There's my review. I'm going to give it a 30. I'm going to give it a 35 out of a 40. Really fun. So there you go. There's my review. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you and goodbye.